there, welcome back. So what are you afraid of? Come on, be honest. Is it snakes or spiders or maybe clowns? What do you think America's top fears are? Well, according to one study, it all depends on where you live. There was a study conducted by a home security site and they used Google Trends to find the most common ways to end the phrases, why am I afraid of or to, or why am I scared of or to, to determine the top phobias in every state. They found that the number one searched fear in New Jersey, New York, North Carolina, and Ohio is theophobia, or the overpowering fear of driving. My neighbors down here in the Sunshine State are searching somnophobia, fear of falling asleep at night. And overall, the top fears across the country are arachnophobia, which is fear of st spiders, and that's pretty expected, but also anthrophobia, which is a morbid fear of people or social situations. Now, I am not convinced of the analytical rigor of this study, but it is kind of fun. So I've added a link to the entire list of my blog post. But fears, fears are not fun, and we all have them. And some are real and some are very irrational. And it seems twisted, right? Irrational fears. Because like, if a fear is irrational, there's no way it should hold so much power of us. We know it's irrational and our rational mind should tell us not to worry about it. But fear is really powerful and it's partially because it's triggered in the most primitive part of our brain, the reptilian brain. And unlike the thinking or emotional brain, the reptilian brain takes care of vital functions that keep us alive without our conscious thought, you know, heart rate, breathing, blood pressure, those kinds of things. And we often call the reptilian brain the survival brain because it is what has enabled our species to su survive extinction. And when the caveman stumbles onto the path of a saber-toothed tiger, you know, his heart rate shoots up. He pumps more blood to his muscles so that he can get ready to fight or flee. His um, adrenaline is released into his bloodstream and all of these things happen to keep him alive. And that was the reptilian brain at work. So, okay, today, no so saber-toothed tigers to contend with. And when the brain is operating efficiently, our more evolved thinking brain jumps in to help determine if we're really in danger. But because the reptilian brain is responsible for keeping us alive, and that's a pretty big job, it often trumps the thinking brain, and that is when even the most irrational fear is powerful enough to distort our sense of reality. There is good news. We have new research that you can use. Earl Miller is a cognitive researcher and specialist and neuroscience professor at MIT, and most of his research has focused on our inability to multitask and what we can do to increase our brain power. But when you understand that to feel fear, you have to consciously think about it, then you can take that research and apply it to fears. Since our brains can only consciously focus on one thing at a time, once you are in the act of doing something different or focusing on something different, the fear fades away. Therefore, taking action or focusing on something different reduces conscious fear. So the next time you're really afraid of something, think of something else, shift your focus, or do something. Watch that fear fade into the background. Want to learn more about how the brain works and how you can make it work better for you? Check out my book, Happier Hour with Einstein and the Full Color Companion Gratitude Journal, available now on Amazon. And if you enjoyed this neuro nugget, pass it on to someone in your corner of the world, because life is always better when you share the good stuff.